All right, good morning, everyone. It is Monday, June 15, and this is the Discovery Day Program Daily Show. Let's get started with our daily exercise, then we'll get on with our show. Hello, my name is Emily, and I will be guiding you through today's yoga and meditation session. Let's get started. Namaste. First meditation activity is to put one hand on your belly and slowly breathe in and out five times. Get deep breaths. Three. Four. Last one. This next one is easy and probably my favorite. Take a deep breath in like you're smelling a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies. <sighs> Smells good. Our next meditation exercise wants you to pretend your breath is like a marching band. Breathe in for four counts. One, two, three, four. And breathe out for four counts. One, two, three, Four. Ready? Let's do it. You know what would help is some tapping like we were in a marching band. There we go. We did it. Finally, part of meditation is mindfulness being mindful of all the good things that we have in our lives and in the world. So we're going to finish our mindfulness and meditation series on thinking about something positive that's going on in your life. And I want you to breathe in that happiness and blow out the stress that you might be feeling. So for me, something that's positive is that I am sitting outside of my house and I hear birds chirping and I can feel the, the, the breeze blowing. Um, just fresh air, uh, so I'm so thankful for that in this time that we're all at home. Um, and I want to blow out the stress of being stuck at home and, and take in that all these good things there are about being home. So, I want you to take a minute, think about something that you're grateful for in your life right now, something or a positive thought. Take a minute and think of something that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. That's a good one, me too. All right, and then think about something that is stressful for you. Mm hmm That can be stressful, that's true. So let's breathe in our positive thought. And blow out your stress. Breathe in happiness. Blow out sadness. Breathe in white light. Breathe out darkness. That'll do it for our meditation and mindfulness portion. Next, we're moving on to yoga. Stay tuned. Today's yoga includes both sitting and standing poses. Please do what you can, however you can. Always remember to be safe and use your balance. All right, let's get started. Our first pose is the Lotus Pose. It says to sit up tall, cross your legs. Most of you are in a wheelchair, so you won't be able to cross your legs. But if you can cross your legs, go ahead and do that. Rest the palms of your hands on your knees. Relax and breathe. Feel the energy radiating from the palms of your hands. Our next pose is called the house, which most of you are in right now, hopefully. Um, you're going to sit up tall again. This time I've crossed my legs, so if you do want to try crossing your legs, go ahead and do that. 
Bring your hands above your head and bring your palms together. Relax and think upwards. I like this pose because it's called the pretzel. So again, sit tall, cross your legs or keep them flat on the floor, whichever you prefer. Turn your body, Oh, get those muscles working. And place your palm on the floor behind you and look behind you, stretch your back and relax. Great, now do the other side. I haven't used these muscles in a long time, so it feels good to stretch. How about you? We are now in the standing position. If you're able to, stand. If not, copy my arm movements. For now, stand up tall for the mountain pose. Put your arms by your side, face up, and hold it for 10 seconds. Our next pose is called the moon pose. Again, stand up tall, put your arms over your head, and we're gonna bend to the left like the shape of a crescent moon. Hold still. Good. If you wish, you can do the other side. Our next pose is called the chair. Bring your hands up over your head and slightly bend your knees like you're gonna sit in a chair. Hold that squat for about five to 10 seconds. Yeah, no, squats are not my thing. The next pose is called the tree pose. Stand with your arms at your side, bring them up over your head, and lift up one leg to the other. Now hold it. Keep your balance as best as you can without hurting yourself or anyone else. For now, we're going to do the star pose. This is kind of also how I sleep. Start with your legs at a wide stance. Then bring your arms up and hold it. Kind of like a starfish. But yeah, this is how I sleep. Our last and final pose is perhaps one of the most famous yoga poses. It's called the warrior pose. Start with one leg in front of the other and bend. Then bring both arms out and lean forward. We are all quarantine warriors. Mm. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's get started. <laughs> it's a hat. All right, let's get started with today's observances, starting with Lobster Day, National Lobster Day. Let's see what is it about Lobster Day. When you think of fine dining, uh, you would think of premium steak or lobster. That is true. Today's observance is National Lobster Day, where we celebrate these water-dwelling crustaceans. Lobster as a food can be boiled, grilled, baked, anything. Uh, it is a very um, expensive food. Uh, I ordered a lobster sandwich before and it cost me $20 for a mere sandwich. That's why I'm not a fan. Are you guys a fan of lobsters? Next is nature fara 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 kafa. Nature fo f oh, I can't say it. Why? 
Nature Photography Day. Have you ever wondered who magazine seems to have perf- Have you ever wondered who magazine seems- Alright, Joe is uh, back to his antics of bad grammar. Anyways, uh, I'll just talk about this nature of photography. You've seen uh, National Geographic, right? Or those, uh, I think, movie or show, TV show that you guys watch at um, Discovery about planet Earth. Uh, the cameraman for that one is a nature photographer. So today is a day dedicated to their work, it looks like. Next up is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day and this is kind of important because uh, a lot of elderly people cannot, they're, they're not able to fight back or um, sometimes they're not able to because of um, they're scared, uh, not just because they're not just because they think they are physically weaker than whoever is trying to abuse them but sometimes they're scared sometimes it's uh, psychological and um, awareness day kind of uh, brings to the forefront that this kind of stuff happens and uh, you know it encourages people to read up on what they could do if they're a witness of uh, something like this happening Today is World Day of Giving, but that doesn't mean that it's only today that you are going to be giving. You should be doing this every day. This is just a observance that reminds other folks who aren't as uh, giving often as uh, many people are. Um, not just giving money, you know. Giving should be many different things. If you volunteer for an effort, that is giving your time and effort to um, a cause. Um, giving money to the poor you should uh, be doing that through donations um, remember those guys that are waiting on the freeway if you want to help them you have to give them food not money because sometimes they spend it on more unnecessary stuff rather than the stuff that they need so if you want to help them give them food you give money on the, in charities you could give your time and effort in volunteers or you could just give a gift to someone that you know. Anything that is giving. Native American Citizenship Day is today. Native Americans were living in here before everyone else. This is their land um, before the settlers came in. Um, but even though they were the first one uh, in this land, they were not considered citizens until uh, June the 2nd of 1924 um, when the Indian Citizenship Act is signed. That's kind of ridiculous in my opinion. They are the ones that own this land. Uh, it was taken from them and yet they weren't recognized as citizens somehow until uh, that day. So today is a good reminder observance observance reminder kind of thing uh, about that uh, know the history so it won't repeat again all right animal day what is the animal that Joe gave us a prairie dog that doesn't look like a dog let's see what he says about the prairie dog so here's what Joe said. Joe said the rodents are native to the grasslands of North America. So here, although not in California, there's not, it's not a grassland. California is a desert. The word prairie means grasslands. Okay, that makes sense, which makes their name fitting, but they're not dogs. Uh, you could see that. Definitely not a dog. Uh, they can grow around a foot long. They look like rodents. Um, they mainly eat plants, but sometimes they eat insects, uh, and they burrow, they go underground, uh, they make tunnels, that's their home. And, uh, they're very alert animals, and actually they help each other. Whenever they see, um, 
a predator or any other animals that are trying to eat them, they would uh, have a way to warn each other so everyone can get away before they get eaten. Plant of the day is... Silky Dogwood. Another thing that is not really a dog. Scientific name is Cornus Amomum. I don't like scientific names. It's a silky dogwood. Species of dogwood is uh, native to the eastern United States from Michigan and Vermont to south, uh, south of Alabama to, to Alabama and Florida. Um, grows up to five meters. Uh, they have blooming flowers. I, I think dogwoods are like trees, but they have flowers. Uh, usually cultivated for decoration uh, and prevent erosions in water banks. So it has a practical use as well. Next up, Today in History. Today in History in 1215, King John of England puts a seal to Magna Carta. Magna Carta me is Latin for so Magna, Magna is great, and then Carta is a charter. So it's the Great Charter. And what it is, is um, it's kind of uh, the King, King John of England came up with it to make peace with other kings that are not popular and also the barons. Um, it guarantees rights, but these rights is uh, this important because that sounds good that it's rights uh, gives you rights but these rights are only for the church and nobility so you have to be rich uh, for for you to have rights if you're a peasant or any of the poor people in the kingdom you don't have rights uh, but anyways it's not really uh, it's it didn't last that long anyways because the uh, the Pope during that time annulled it and because he annulled it, a war started. I think it's called the Great Baron War. I'm not sure. But there's a war that started after it was annulled. So, it, you know, it's, it's nice that it gives rights, but it has to give it to everyone, not just rich people. Next, 1844, Charles Goodyear receives a patent for vulcanization, a process to strengthen rubber. So vulcanization is, oh, you can see in the picture, um, this worker is about to vulcanize a tire to make it sturdy. And the way they do that is they use sulfur and they heat it to around a little bit less than oven temperature. I think it's th around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, a little less, because you know how you, you you guys bake at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's probably around 300, 320, something like that. Um, heats it up with sulfur and makes the rubber stronger and more flexible. So it could withstand a lot more damage. And it better do. It better do. It better... It, it better... What would be the word for that? It better do. It better be strong, I guess is a better way to say it. It better be strong because a tire is something that is uh, rolling around in, uh, on the road and the road has plenty of uh, stuff in it that could uh, ruin any weak tire. Next up. 1934, the United States Great Smoky Mountains National Park is founded. Um, not founded by one person, it's founded by several different people, mostly from Knoxville, Tennessee and Asheville, North Carolina. Um, they were the people who kept fighting for the national park to be established because a lot of people don't want it to happen because they're going to say, oh, we don't have much money, it's going to cost too much. But they persevered and at 1934, it's finally a national park. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Notable birth, 1911, Wilbert Audrey. Is, he's an English author who co-created Thomas the Tank Engine. I don't know much about this. I didn't grow up with Thomas the Tank, but a lot of you guys know 
Well, I mean, he's right there on the picture. Looking kind of, uh... He's looking at... He's, lo he's looking at Wilbert beside him. <laughs> I don't know the story of Thomas the Tank. If you guys know the story of Thomas the Tank, you should comment below. Tell me about it. I'll read it and then you teach me. You're the teacher on this section. I don't know much about him. Write it in the comments below. Notable figure that departed on this day is Ernest Ernst. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. He's a German painter. Um, in 1930, uh, he he died in 1938. He is a painter who his style is called expressionist. Um, a good example of an expressionist painting is this one, very popular. Uh, that's called The Scream by Edvard Munch. He did not. Uh, well, here's what I, I, I have it here because it, it's an, a good example expressionist. So obviously the person in the picture is screaming, right? So if I'm doing this, do you know what I'm screaming about? You can't. But in the picture, you kind of have an idea of what he's screaming about because of the emotion. Maybe he's just tired of um, everything going on around him because you could see the places around him are kind of wavy and distorted. So expressionist kind of gives you uh, it, it changes how things are um, painted just so you have a better idea of what emotions it's giving. Because um, as you can see, rivers and the sky doesn't look like that realistically. It's just painted that way so you know that it's kind of, uh, you know, dizzying and, you know, what other words uh, can you say? It's a more... Uh, it's like he's ha having a migraine or something like that. That's the emotion that it's giving off. So expressionist paintings like uh, Ernst uh, Ludwig Kirchner has done are kind of like that. It should get it, get, it kind of expresses an emotion to you, which we'll find out in our daily dose of art. This is a painting by Mr. Kirchner. Uh, this is called Davos in Summer. Uh, in 19, uh, this painting is done in 1925. Um, right now, it is in the Kirchner Museum in Davos, Switzerland. The same place that he's painting. Um, so this one is a little bit tougher than the screen. The screen is easier because everything is distorted. You feel like he's having a migraine. This one, I'm going to ask you guys a question. What do you think is the emotion that he's trying to convey to you by painting uh, this place? What do you feel by looking at this picture? Write it down in the comments below and we will respond to you and uh, have a discussion about it. It's time for Word of the Day. Today's word of the day is illustrious. I L L U S T R I O U S. A little bit long today. Illustrious. It's an adjective. That means it's a word that describes something. Kind of like the word fast. It describes the way something is. If someone says, He's running fast. That means he's not running slow. He's describing the way he's running. So this one means something is well-known, respected, and admired. Um, similar words, something that you would hear more often in TV or things that you read is distinguished, noteworthy, or acclaimed. I'm sure you guys have heard of that before. Uh, especially on movies from um, the acclaimed director of the movie Star Wars or something because uh, he's well known who is the acclaimed director of the movie Star Wars you got George Lucas right 
He's acclaimed. He's well known. Um, let's read our sample sentence from Joe. The illustrious businessman John Sunday helped a small town to become a rich city. John Sunday. That sounds. That name sounds familiar. Do you guys know who John Sunday is? Again, if you guys have an idea, put it on the comments below. I want to hear. Because that game sounds familiar to me. Anyways, let's move on. Career Spotlight. Career Spotlight today is, of course, because of our observance, it's... Always aim your cough downwards. It's nature photographer. How much do they earn? Well, they earn about twenty-four thousand to forty thousand a year. Um, they take photos of nature, plants, animals, landscapes uh, for use in anything that needs that. For example, documentaries like the ones you guys watch. Certain magazines like National Geographic usually uh, employs them. Uh, websites um, some of the pictures that we show you guys in this video is done by nature photographers um, and movies sometimes it's in actual movies so if you like going out to nature this is the job for you and finally our fact of the day or there you go our fact of the day is about lobster since it's lobster day lobster was cheap and abundant during the colonial times <coughs> it's so cheap that America even fed the prisoners lobster <laughs> well see this is why I don't like lobster I think it's too expensive for what it is um, the only reason why it's expensive is because there are not very many of them anymore but when it comes to taste I think you could do the same just getting some uh, large prawns you know you get a similar flavor and save a lot of money um, or if you could get a time machine you could buy lobsters for cheap back then they'll give it away for uh, for free so you don't have you don't need to commit a crime and be a prisoner you could probably just ask them for some and they'll sell it to you for cheap anyways that's our show today thank you for tuning in I'll see you guys next time.